Hey everybody, it's Vault Fox, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to put together these fabulous Baby Yoda cuddling gloves. Just kidding, he's not going to be cuddling Baby Yoda anymore. What is even going to happen? What is even the plot of season three going to be? All jokes aside, I am going to be showing you how to put together these Mandalorian gloves today, and you don't even need a sewing machine. You can sew them together, but you don't have to. So if you want to learn how I did that, then just keep on watching. I decided to go with 3D printing for my husband's Mandalorian armor, mostly because I got a really good deal on some files from Galactic Armory, and I also wanted to get a little bit better with sizing things according to someone else's body type. And I do have a tutorial on how I go about doing that, and I'll link that in the cards for you guys. And all you need is one of those Taylor's measuring tapes, as well as a bit of patience to print out some test pieces. Now all that said, these hand plates were pretty simple for me to print out. I'm pretty sure I printed these at 100% and they fit my husband's hands perfectly. And now it's time to bring out the Bondo. This stuff is typically used in car repair and it'll be used to fill in like scratches and small dings and pinholes and stuff like that. However, in my case, I'm using this to get rid of all of those 3D printed layer lines. The trick with this stuff is to not glob it all on there. You're gonna wanna think in more thin multiple coats as opposed to one thick coat. Once I have a nice layer on there, I'm going back in with one of these little metal toothpick kind of things that I have and I'm just getting all of that Bondo out of the crevices. I then let those hand plates sit for about three to four hours to cure, and I go out to my garage after that and get my mouse sander with some 120 grit sandpaper and go to town on them. Once I do a pass with the mouse sander, I do like to go back in and do a little bit of hand sanding. I'm using a combination of 150 grit as well as 220 grit sanding sponges that I got from Harbor Freight. These are really nice to get into the nooks and crannies, like especially around the triangle bit. And I'm also going back over it again with that little dental pick as before, going in the crevy, <laughs> crevies, going back in the nooks and crannies to get all that Bondo out of there. I did three layers of Bondo with the whole sanding routine in between each one after they cured, making sure each time that I'm sanding that I'm not putting too much pressure on the Bondo to kind of gouge through it. And that's my biggest piece of advice if you're going to go with this Bondo method. Don't sand too hard. You don't want to put too much pressure on it because that Bondo will chip away and you're going to just end up having to do more work by putting more Bondo on it. Next up is some more priming, and for this I'm using some 2-in-1 filler primer which is also from the auto parts store and spraying that on in a nice even layer. I let those dry overnight in my garage and they're just a little bit dusty because everything in my life is dusty now and they just need a little brush with some 150 grit sanding sponge and they're ready to paint. The paint I use is just a cheap acrylic paint that I got from Michaels a while back that I already had on hand. It is an Americana paint in desert sand. I'll link it down for you guys in the description, but any type of tan paint will typically work. I used about three layers of this stuff to get it to the opaqueness that I wanted. After around 15 or so minutes, that tan is nice and dry and I'm going back in with some masking tape. And I'm just putting this around the triangle so that I have a nice crispy edge whenever I lay down that blue color. And as for that blue color, I'm just using another Americana acrylic paint in winter blue. Once again, after about 15 or so minutes, that paint is now dry and I'm taking off that masking tape and oh, this is always the most satisfying part about doing masking for me. Even if there is a little bit of cleanup that we have to do, it's not that hard. I'm just going back over some of that spot where there may have been some blue overbleed with some of that tan original color that we had. Once those touch-ups were dry, I went out to my garage and took out my matte clear coat from Rust-Oleum and just sprayed those over top of both of the hand plates. This is very important for the next step where I'm going to be using an oil-based paint in order to put some weathering on there. I let that clear coat cure overnight and now we've got two nicely finished and clear coated hand plates for us to muck up and get all nice and dirty. So in order to get started, I just have my oil paint, I have some paper towels, and I also have a paintbrush in order to put the oil paints onto my product. All you have to do to start is put some oil paint on your paintbrush or on your finger and start painting it onto your piece. Now look, it does look really scary how I'm putting this on there. It looks like I'm just painting, let's be honest, looks like I'm painting straight poop on there. But the way that oil paints work, you can blend these so nicely with that paper towel whenever you go back over it. Don't be afraid to really mash that stuff in there and into all the nooks and crannies. Trust me, you'll be able to get a lot of this back up if you put a proper clear coat on underneath. If you are still apprehensive about using oil paints in order to weather, you can just go over with a standard black wash as well. Or if you wanted to, you could take some oil paints and do a test swatch on a side that's not as easily visible to kind of get more comfortable with this. 
Now that the hand plates are all done, we've got to get some gloves to put them on. And in order to do that, I have a pair of long black motorcycle gloves and some yellow workers gloves. And modifying these gloves to work for Mando's gloves is going to be super simple. I'm simply taking those black motorcycle gloves and taking each of the fingers and cutting just below where the knuckle would hit on each finger. Now I had my husband try these on before and I had little tick marks in order for me to know where to cut, but that's basically what I'm doing here. You're going to want to cut a lot more of the finger off than you really think you want to. And once you've got all of those cut off, you're just going to take your yellow glove, slip that glove on first, and then slip that black glove over top. And you basically have the gloves done right now. I am going to do a little bit more to these just to make sure that they're not super bulky for him. But yeah, you could be done right here if you wanted to. And like I said before, I am going to do a little bit of altering work on the yellow gloves just to cut down on the bulk. For that, I'm just cutting off a little bit of the cuff around the bottom and doing the same thing with the black gloves and cutting those cuffs off just below the wrist. And if you're using the same motorcycle gloves that I have linked in the description, you're going to see that there is a liner inside of them. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling that liner out and cutting it away to minimize bulk. If these gloves still end up being a little bit too bulky for my husband, I probably will in the future just cut the yellow tips off of the yellow glove and glue them onto the inside of the black glove. But for now, these are working pretty nicely. Now that we've got some gloves, it's time to attach those hand plates to the gloves. And in order to do that, I'm just using some good old E6000 glue and some Velcro. I just take the E6000 and squeeze it onto the back of the hand plate and take a popsicle stick to just get it into a nice even layer. And then I place the Velcro strips on top of the E6000 and kind of put some weights on top of it to make sure that it kind of dries as flat as it possibly can. For this, I use my 123 blocks. I know that's pretty excessive, but they fit perfectly, so why not? And getting the Velcro onto the gloves is a fairly similar process. I'm still using E6000, but in order to help it grip a little bit better, I forgot to show you this, but I did sand down the little spot where I put the Velcro on. And that just helped the glue to grab onto something a little bit better than the slippery leather. And then I put some vices on top of the Velcro and let those sit overnight. The only thing left to do on these gloves is to roughen them up a bit. And in order for me to do that, I'm starting off with some 80 grit sandpaper and just going to town on these gloves. I'm really trying to roughen them up and kind of strip a lot of that luster and that shininess off of the leather. And then after that, I'm just going in with some shoe polish and lightly going over the, every bit of the glove over top of the black as well as the yellow bits and just trying to get it really nice and grimy. I actually think a lot of layers of doing this shoe polish will really help in the long run. And once that's pretty much dry to the touch, your gloves are complete. So now you can go and rescue baby Yoda and then lose him to a Jedi and then just cry yourself to sleep. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope this tutorial helped you out in some way. If you're making a Mandalorian cosplay, then make sure to tag me on Instagram or if you just want to leave a comment down below and let me know how your build is going, that would be great. As always guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hi Aries, can you please stop stretching and show me your butthole? Thanks. Let's, let's move that out of the way. It looks like a slob. This is what happens whenever you film by your workspace. It always looks like trash. <laughs>